We'll move to our next uh, talk by Dr. Sam Shin. Um, Sam is a distinguished professor of mathematics and statistics at the San Diego State University and the visiting researcher at Scripps uh, San Diego. Sam also gave a really nice talk in our colloquium a couple of weeks back. Thanks for that, Sam, and look forward to your talk today. Well, thank you, Anish. Thank you, uh, Judith, for uh, putting together such a nice uh, program. We have enjoyed uh, excellent presentations. So my presentation uh, today is about super ensemble CCA method and super ensemble joint EOF method for SUS prediction of uh, US precipitation. So this is a joint work with Tom Schmidt and Ralph Ferraro of uh, NOAA STAR. Um, it's uh, basically a paper by, uh, it is a paper by uh, uh, Schmidt et al, like here, and uh, it's old paper, 2006-10, but with some new development. So our goal is to predict the US precipitation uh, for monthly, we have one month need. For weekly, we have previous month need, uh, previous week need. And so what is the main idea? You can see this figure, we have colored uh, different uh, domains. And so, uh, so that means each domain is a predictor. So there is a bit of history to this is that in 1980s at uh, Scripps, Tim Ballett and uh, Rodolf uh, Presendorf, uh, they developed this uh, CCA method with uh, EOFs. They made a very substantial mathematical progress. That is, in the classical CCA, you need to invert a matrix, but in this uh, weather forecasting business, that matrix is not invertible. And in this uh, CC, uh, in the uh, EOF spectral space, and so they, their method can avoid the inversion of a matrix and make it fast and also make it possible. And then in the early 1990s, Tony Bonstein and uh, Tom Schmidt uh, they introduced this method uh, at uh, CPC and made it a, an operational model for seasonal forecast. Uh, and then what they did is that they used SST as the predictor and the US you know, temperature and precipi precipitation as predictant. And with that kind of a prediction, there is a, a problem. The problem is that you use the global SST, and what happens is that the tropical SST always dominates uh, everything. Just like in a room, we have so many people talking, we say we have 10 people talking. The person who is so loud, and that is tropical SST, and then you cannot hear anybody else. But for the US temperature or precipitation, like uh, sometimes you know, the, the Northern Atlantic becomes important. Sometimes uh, uh, Northern Pacific uh, becomes important. So what do we decide to do in the, uh, in, uh, in the around the year 2000, I was on sabbatical at Goddard at uh, BLS Group. So Bill gave me this problem. So now, now let's look into this and how can we do better? So we decided that to divide the ocean into different regions and let each region predict and then put them together. Just like we in the room, we let each person speak and then assemble them, assemble them together according to their error. If they have large error, we have smaller weight. If they have a smaller error, we have a larger weight. So that is the best idea here. And then what uh, 
uh, what Tom uh, did uh, in 2016 is that, well, we actually can use the oceanic uh, precipitation as a predictor. Even we use the previous month, the US precipitation as a predictor, so we can increase the number of predictors. So let's get to the definition and math review. So I, again, I'm a math professor. So I always like to analyze what is original mathematics problem. And can, if we do forecast, do we understand the mathematics? And what is the essential idea of the mathematics and the method? And I can, can you know, is there, what's the, what, what are their assumptions? Is there anything wrong? And so here, the, the first is CCA. Well, CCA basically consider, you know, we know correlation, that's a like, two time series you have the correlation. And then CCA is you correlate two fields. You know, one field would be say, uh, tropical SST, that's a field. And one field would be uh, US precipitation, for instance. So the two field, and then you, try to maximize the correlation. And you, so you put a weight for each grid box for each field. And then you create a time series for each field and then maximize the correlation. So when you use this method as a prediction and then you using Tim Ballet uh, method, uh, this becomes a simple regression problem. So it's, it's, uh, it's the, the mathematics computing part the, 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 in, at a prediction stage is very short, very easy. And then second method is called joint EOF. So joint EOF, so this is the, you, you can compute EOF set temperature, EOF for precipitation. But you can also do, you put your data, say, uh, temperature data or precipitation data or any kind of space time data. So if you, you put a space in the row and time as column there, and then you stack them to, on top of each other. Say so top is say precipitation, bottom is say is temperature. And, and then you compute the EOFs of this uh, tall uh, metrics, the stack together metrics. And then when you use that to do a uh, prediction, so you think this way. So you, instead of say the, 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 the column aligned with same temperature each, uh, same time for each column, and you take, just shift it by one week or one month. And then at the last column, I, for the predicted, predicted part, you have one column blank. So that is the missing data. So with that kind of idea, your prediction problem become a missing data problem. And then we use uh, this uh, multivariate regression uh, to fill in the missing data. And so this, you ch basically you're changing the temporal problem into a spatial problem, that kind of mathematics. Uh, is, uh, uh, is, in, in, is incorporated in this paper. And what's the, what do we mean by super ensemble? So that means that we assemble things together with consideration of error. So you have a large error and you have a smaller weight. You have a smaller error, you have a large weight. And then super ensemble CCA, that means each member is done by CCA. Super ensemble EOF, joint EOF, that means each member uh, is predicted by joint EOF. And let me give uh, uh, this uh, kind of a flow chart. I, in my last talk uh, two weeks ago, I emphasized flow chart and reproducible results. So I, I like, you know, I, I fear that we all should follow a clear logic a clear mathematics and a, a, a clear assumptions, we know what we're talking about. 
So this illustrates the, the SECCA method. So you have say predict, predictors, say for instance, you have SST from different regions, you have predicted, for instance, the US precipitation. So this is only an example. Okay? And then you say you have the uh, time T, you have uh, you know, several predictants like uh, the tropical Pacific, say North uh, Pacific, etc. And then each of them, you decompose this field by EOF so that you represent the field in the, in the spectral way. And then you have your US precipitation, the predictant, you do the same EOF decomposition. And after that, you, 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 formu you formulate this uh, simple regression, simple regression, just, the, just like Y equal to uh, B0 plus uh, A plus BX, okay, simple regression. And then you make the reg regression and then, and then you estimate errors. So we also have produced an error formula. And then you, you produce this five predictions. And then according to their error, you put them together as your ensemble prediction. So this is kind of a, the, the flow chart of the idea and the mathematics. So, so we developed this method in uh, 2000, uh, around 2000, 2001, two, when I was on sabbatical at, uh, at Goddard uh, working with BLL. And so we produced a long uh, technical memo uh, at NASA and we documented all the mathematics and then we published a paper and with target try to overcome this uh, spring barrier. And the way to do it is say that, you know, statistic forecasting, if just one shot, that's the linear forecasting. But because of this, this uh, uh, area of weight, and that become nonlinear. So this, we call it quasi nonlinear. And so that means that, it, you know, you try to find dynamic connections, say from which spot, uh, uh, connected with which spot, like say, you know, for instance, the El Nino with Southeast US or et cetera. And then you can have all kinds of combinations and try to see if you can overcome uh, uh, certain problems. And then uh, 2003, uh, uh, Tenzin Ma uh, introduced this to, uh, to CPC so now CPC is using this, uh, you know, that just a year after CPC has been using this as a uh, operational model. So CCA is used, uh, is used there and e ensemble CCA is also used there now. And a further improvement come to our joint work with Tom Schmidt. And so that is, uh, we introduced the joint EOF and we, we tested uh, precipitation as a predictor. Uh, and then we try to make it, into, uh, make it simpler into classroom teaching. And this is still ongoing. To give an example of the scale, say you we use the GPCP, one degree GPCP uh, as a validation, ground truth, and with the forecast, and then we use the correlation so that it would just you know, that's uh, from 1997, 2014, we do a loop and then we do a sp uh, time correlation for each uh, corresponding grid box. And so you can see joint EOF uh, in June, so it has good scale in the middle part of the of US and the CCA part is uh, as, uh, as, uh, has some overlap scales with the Joint EOF, but they have they actually they are in the different places, so that is good. They are not the same, okay. and we put them together, joint EOF and joint and the CCA, and that is better. So that is the third one. So you can see it's better. So that means we don't see many of those uh, purple region, uh, gray regions. The gray and purple regions getting smaller. And then if you look at say, what about 
the, the whole US average. So whole US average, you know, uh, and then we see that it's about you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then you put, uh, put CCA and joint UF, UF together, it's better. So we see. And then say, so, well, how can you, can you get this US precipitation, the you know, total precipitation right? And so we did the forecast, and then you can see we, we got something good, but of course, you know, this is not, this is the El Nino thing. We got it really right, but we got this uh, this uh, you know we missed this big bump, okay. And then the 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 spatial correlation, the spatial correlation is up and down. Okay? And so also we see that because we could get El Nino helps, and then we look at the southern part of U.S because we found that seems that that helps so the southern part would do well we do better I mean do better so we just said well what about the south so we test the south and then we have a better correlation and this is a better scale too compared to the whole US and of course if we test in many other regions some regions not as good another test of the scale is the is the heat map you know the tosai map you know, above lomo lomo below lomo and this is the heat, the heat map, and this mismap. Mismap is that you know, bad heat. So it's supposed to be the top third percent, a third, but it hits the bottom third. So, so that means that this, uh, this is a bad part and this is a good part. So what we have found is that, you know, that probably not much to detail to analyze, but I see there is a difference here the blue region here and blue region here. So that we have more misses in June uh, with when there is no ocean part. So the ocean precipitation is, is helpful. And that's what we want to conclude here. I mean, may not be concluded, it's kind of hint. And uh, we also tested say, what is average heat and miss kind of thing. So average heat exceeds bit, but uh, 30 to 40 percent hit. Okay. It's, not, it's not, not, probably we want more, but we don't. Okay. And then we also compare with model predictions. So this is a uh, North American multi model assemble. It looked like we're doing it slightly better. Somehow, you know, that this, this is uh, the wide region is 1.3, and our 0.1.3 is like blue and uh, sky blue region is similar, similar uh, seems slightly smaller, but comparable. Okay. And then we tested to say, week, what about week, well, one week forecast? So we just choose like every month, which is seven days, the second week. And then we did some test, you know, same thing, so that we find that the, this black one means the monthly scale and the correlation scale, and the red one is weekly scale. The weakness scale, as we expect, is uh, lower, but somehow, somehow in January is higher. So uh, would not that could be a kind of coincidence? You know, it's, there's no theory to support it. And then what we're doing now is we really want to, because this is so this method is not hard. is 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 pretty. Uh, mathematically, is, you know, or used to be actually really hard, but now we find a new way to simplify the mathematical theory, and then we can we are coding it into R and uh, using SVD, and, and then we want to introduce this method for classroom and teaching. So the summary: we have analyzed the NOAA CPC uh, seasonal forecasting tool. That is what is using there now. It's called ECCA. Now we have tested SECCA and SEJEOF for monthly and weekly uh, US precipitation forecasting. And now uh, uh, we're developing the optimized SECCA and SEJEOF. And then we also want to couple that with uh, our 4 DVD uh, tool. And we want to use uh, this tool uh, to be used in classroom for teaching. Thank you very much for your attention. Great. Thanks a lot, Sam, for a great talk.
these tools. Um, any questions for Sam? So I had one, Sam, and um, so you've tested these for largely for the US and the continental US region. Right? Are there efforts to test this in other regions around the globe and other challenges in terms of different regimes or different forcing? For instance, US and so maybe a big part, but if we go to Europe, it's not playing that big a role. Yeah, how well can we adapt these methods for different regions? Yeah, when we at, uh, when at NASA at that time, uh, Kim and I, uh, the, a postdoc from uh, uh, PLS group, and I tested uh, many regions in the US. That's how we say we uh, tried to uh, uh, overcome the spring barrier, the Great Plain area, Southeast area, Southwest area. And then we tried to, uh, from the papers saying, you know, like uh, uh, Rup uh, Rupnowski Hopper papers, say, which one hit which one, this kind of thing. We try to incorporate those, all the published information we know into this model. So that means this, this because it's, the model's flexibility, so we, we would be able to do that. Uh, but of course, still, you know, a lot of manpower is labor intensive. And so that's why now we're trying to optimize this. And then so, so that would allow us to do the- that more tests. <laughs> it's like mass production. Of it. <laughs> so the answer to your question is that we did for US, yeah. but I'm not done for other parts of the world. Okay. Great. I don't see other questions, Sam. Thanks again for a great talk and <laughs> nice work.